Hey, just a uh, quick, up, quick update on what's been going on in the greenhouse since last year. A lot of changes wanted to bring. Some of you I know are following what I do uh, up to speed. So here's a quick tour of where we're at. And I'll uh, just kind of tell you some of the major lessons that I learned. Uh, number one, growing seedlings uh, required a different kind of lighting system. So you'll see that I've got a different kind of fluorescent bulb. This is called a T5. T is in Thomas number five uh, setup. Got this on Amazon. It's about $80. One of those really lower cost compared to everything else with a bazillion good reviews purchases. But you see I can adjust the height of the lamp as the plants are growing and I've got seedlings growing in these humidity domes and they're good to get the seeds just out of the rock wall here and uh, that's where I had a roadblock and I'll show you how I solved that in a second these are some of my uh, giant Roma tomato seedlings getting ready to be transferred over to this next step that I want to show you uh, had a hard time figuring out how to go from this to up here in the hydroponic setup. And this turns out to be the magic bullet, the intermediate step. And, and so what I've got here, I just finished building this yesterday. I've got a, uh, a small high hydraulic pump down there, a little uh, $40 Amazon pump. And I built that little frame setup with these misting nozzles here. And I want to show you what they do but I'm pretty sure you can already imagine what they do. When I turn the water flow on, I don't know if you can hear it. You see those little bubbles of water underneath popping up? They come up and they hydrate the rock wool underneath. So this is actually a variation of hydroponics with aeroponics. So down in there are all those little nozzles that we just had. And what I'm trying to do is encourage the plants to develop their root system. So you see those two little buds that are just starting to come out? I want those rock wool cubes to stay moist enough where the roots just start to come out. And when I get sort of a beard, B-E-A-R-D, like a Santa Claus beard of roots coming down, then I can transfer it over to my near film technique system which is over here so this is a great way for the seedlings to kind of get out stretch their legs get used to the aquaponics nutrient solution and uh, grow a little heavier this is our cucumber station this year and we'll just sort of come back and take a huge overhead look I've got a total of six seven eight nine ten eleven cucumber uh, seeds planted from seedlings running right now and this year we're doing something a little bit different I ran these ropes these uh, twine sections all the way up to the ceiling and what I'm doing as the cucumber comes up I'm twisting it and wrapping it around the, uh, the cordage and that's going to train these a lot better last year I didn't really train them as well as I think I should have and it keeps the area open and light and I can get in there to hose off the leaves I can get any kind of mites or worms out of there that I see early on and um, I'm really able to get down in here and I'm not going to take it off I want to though. Let's see if you can see. See the roots down in there that are doing their business? That thing is probably one third filled with roots right now. So I know I've got a good setup and uh, I'm actually starting to see the first of the cucumbers starting to come in down here. So we should have flowers and then cucumbers inside of a week. I cheated a little bit this year. I went out and I bought basil from Lowe's Foods down here 
in North Carolina. And they sell these in uh, little dirt plugs for about um, three or four dollars. What they don't know is I take their little three or four dollar basil plant and I get about, oh, I don't even know how many bowls of basil at the end of the year. I wish you could smell this here. It's really wonderful and aromatic. If you just come over and touch it, it gets the oils and the leaves going. And so what I'm doing this year in particular is I'm making sure when they're young, I'm cutting it down so they'll sprout out and kind of bush out like a bonsai tree. If you let it get it too tall, it starts to interfere with the upper tube. So this year we're going to kind of cut those down, keep them short and stubby, get a lot of branches at the base uh, of the basil. I also cheated and went to uh, Lowe's Home Improvement versus Lowe's Food and I bought one of their mint plants. So this is a peppermint plant. I've got that running and uh, you can actually, I've got one cell open here. You see how that water is circulating down? This is called a, called a near film technique. There's a very thin film of water that runs under the roots of all of the plants. And so that's running throughout the system here. And there's the basil plants down on the other end. I've actually got one of my tomato seedlings. This is a cherry tomato seedling growing with that near film running past the base of the roots down underneath. So we've got the peppermint, now we've got some parsley, and I'm going to try to do the same thing. Let it grow up a little bit and keep cutting it back. I find if you let stuff take over in here, it will take over uh, very quickly. And then we've got the bad boys, the lettuce is up and running, there we go. And I've just been putting in the uh, seedlings that have been coming over from this area. When the roots are big enough, we transfer them up over into here. And I don't know if I can reach down in there and get it, but hopefully you can see. See all those roots hanging down there? That's what's feeding. That's what's feeding our lettuce. So every 30 days we'll be getting uh, seedling to lettuce harvest out of that NFT near film technique system. These are the hydroponic Dutch buckets and those little black tubes down there are squirting out uh, three times a day, an hour a day, a nutrient solution running from the outside of the shed into the bucket filled with perlite. So all of these tomatoes were grown from seedlings you can almost see which ones I started to plant first and which ones were planted last. You come back around, it's almost like a before and after shot on a cooking show. But just so you see inside, we're just filling the inside of the buckets with perlite. I've reused the stuff from last year. There's little bits of roots in there from the previous plants. But if I can get two years out of it, it just lowers the cost of operating inside of the unit. One of the things I did this year, I do work from home. I purchased a, uh, a refurbished older computer from Amazon down here. It's about a $70 desktop office PC as opposed to a $1,000 one or higher. And I hooked it up to the internet down here and just put a cheap monitor and a headset so that when I'm working down here I can actually in between emails or seminars with customers turn around and come back and just sort of visually inspect everything make sure it's doing good. The uh, other lesson that we learned last year was getting more cooler air into the unit into this uh, greenhouse area if we can so we got one of these cheaper uh, window units here from Walmart has a high and a low setting that's really helping getting some of the cooler air into here and then this year we bought a second attic fan at a yard sale really nice find the one on the left cost 
uh, over a hundred dollars with everything. The one on the right cost twenty dollars. So yay yard sales. That's pretty nice find and they're both on thermostats so when these thermostats since the room is too warm these fans will kick on and help exhaust some of that warmer air out finally we have our strawberry section strawberries are my arch nemesis here you'll see we've got a uh, LED light that's on top of these now what's unique about the strawberries is that they don't like to go straight into your hydroponic system they tend to rot in fact if you have a root that's been in dirt and then you try to put it in one of these it gets really funky really fast so what I learned was a lot of customers will buy these root them and then as the runners start to come off they put the runners in the rock wall those little green cubes and if the roots of the runner only ever know this if they never touch dirt coming off of uh, a runner from a normal strawberry plant then you can put them in an NFT system or in a deep water culture system or I'm gonna actually use a vertical tower over here to house my strawberries so while I do have a flower here that could be a strawberry coming up in the future I don't care I don't want it I want these producing a lot of green uh, nitrogen rich leaves that break off tend to hang down over the edge when they do I'll put a plastic bag around that runner with one of those green grow cubes and a little bit of that nutrient solution and that way as soon as it's born all it will ever know is hydroponic nutrient solution. It won't ever know there was something called dirt and I think something in the root chemicals change when that happens and they harden off allowing me to put it back inside of the greenhouse. So that's where things are right now. In a few weeks you'll see that this place will have dramatically changed. Next update I'm sure the cucumbers will be up to the top. The entire rows of the NFT system will be populated with lettuce. Those tomato plants will probably be up to the second tier here. And all of my buckets will have plants in them. So thanks for following along. More to come. If you have any questions, let me know. I'll be happy to help you get started.